from the studios of BaseNet Internet Television in Boston, Massachusetts. This is show number 11 of As We See It, recorded on Sunday, October 2nd, 2011. Good evening, or whatever time of day it is when you're listening to this podcast. I'm Ed Jupin. Fred Boaz will be joining us from the Pennsylvania studio shortly. But before we get started, let me give you some contact information. We'd like to keep this an interactive show, so you could contact us and give us your show ideas by emailing us at info at basenetintermedia.com. We're also on social media. At Facebook, you could reach us at Basenet. On Twitter, we are Basenet TV. And on Google+, Plus, since they are still just using personal names and not brands, you could contact either myself or Fred as Edward A. Jupin or Frederick Boaz. Today we have a special guest, BaseNet Internet Television's National News Coordinator from St. Louis, Missouri, Holly Hurley, will be joining us. So now, Fred, here you go. All yours. Welcome aboard to show number 11. Hey, thanks, Ed. I appreciate it. Like we said from Pennsylvania, I'm Fred Boaz, and uh, welcome, Holly. It's always a pleasure. Um, Today we're going to discuss a bunch of stuff, and I'm going to start off with a, an article I read today about Roman Polanski, who, uh, 33 years, he regrets what he did at a party back in 1978. And for those of you who may not have been around by, by back, happened. Uh, Roman Polanski was arrested by the California authorities for having sex with a 13-year-old girl at a Hollywood party after plying her with alcohol. Now. Well, Polanski was married to Sharon Tate, who was a victim of the Tate-LaBianca murders by the Charles Manson family. And um, Marone Polanski uh, fled this country after serving 42 days in, uh, in jail. He fled to France, and he's been here for 33 years. And the reason this becomes an issue is that two years ago, uh, Roman Polanski was arrested in Switzerland by the Zurich authorities when he, ex- when he came off of a plant at Zurich Airport to uh, attend an awards ceremony. And people have to remember that France, uh, just like in the Ira Einhorn case, does not give up uh, its, its foreign people living in their country unless they've broken French law, which is their right as a sovereign nation. And the Swiss chose to... Uh, California failed failure to appear warrant, which is what Roman Polanski was be was guilty of failure to appear in a California court for sentencing, and so he he wasn't picked up in Switzerland for this rape charge from the no, seventh. not at all, not at all. It was a failure to appear, which, which uh, has a lifetime of whatever it is. Uh, I've talked to lawyers in town in the area here, and they said that the failure to appear warrant has a, a forever lifetime. And the Swiss asked the, and according to Swiss law, in order for an extradition to go through, the original paperwork, the original paperwork must arrive in Switzerland for to be reviewed by a Swiss court to see if the, if it meets the criteria of Swiss tradition. California never sent the paperwork, so after ten months they released them, and people in and, uh, the California court now were all bent out of shape about it. Roman Polanski is free to run the run the border between France and Switzerland, and he's good, and he's good to go in two countries. Yeah, when well, people forget that Switzerland and France are sovereign nations, honor or not honor whatever laws they choose, and France has not been one to honor extradition. And like I said, with the case of our Einhorn and Roman Polanski, but the Swiss, they they chose to honor the California basically a bench warrant for uh, failure to appear, and. Uh, you know, the United States did not follow through on, on what is Swiss law, that they must have a copy of the original case file to study. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm upset about this for a number of reasons. Number one is, you know, the United States let him go originally. Then you find him on this other warrant and you're going to bring him in on this other warrant and you mess up the paperwork. You know, I mean, can't we send someone over there with the paperwork? I mean, how long did they give him, Fred? They gave him 10 months. Yeah, 10 months is enough time to get some paperwork. We, we could have had the lobster walk it there by in 10 months. Oh, I don't know. That's asking a lot of Larry. <laughs> but the, the, what, what you're saying, Holly, is absolutely true. You know, we, 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 when we leave this country, we're not subject to U.S. law anymore. And Switzerland, being a sovereign nation, can make what make. And they say, look, you know, we want the, the case law must be studied by the Swiss courts. That's their law. And we did not comply with it. They cannot hold him forever. And 
they released him. And now, like I said, he's free. Then Switzerland will not charge him twice because they have the same basic double jeopardy law that we have because a lot of on the on uh, originally based on U.S. law. And they're not going to they're not going to recharge him. And so now he can run the border between France and Switzerland as he chooses because he's free to run both countries. Well, absolutely. And, you know, from, you know, I mean, watch out for your 13 year old kids in France and Switzerland. <laughs> I mean, that's not a that's not a safe situation for them. But the problem is, you know, this is this is part and partial of a problem that we have, you know, as Americans, when we try to assert our our particular agenda in other countries, you have to be mindful of their laws and of the things that they're using and the things that they're doing, because we would expect that much on our soil. And we run into trouble sometimes abroad because we expect them just to you know, do everything it, that you want them to it, do. It, it goes into saying with the United States, this whole theory of being the world's policeman. We we yeah. just can't be the world's policeman in any way, shape, or form. But that has nothing to do with being the world's policeman. It well, but, to... but you know, I, I see where Holly's saying. She's just saying oh, no, no, we no, I, I stick in our it, nose, so. you know, or, or expecting other countries to run their governments or judicial systems the same way we run ours. Well, here. this goes into a case that happened about five years ago where one kid was um, spray painting cars in Singapore, and he got a ta- he got tagged by the local police in the court and was ca- and uh, was sentenced to caning, which means being basically beaten on the back with a cane. And people in this country were against to that. They wanted they wanted the, the United States government to step in, and we did. And he was given ten lashes rather than twenty. But I mean, who do we think we are stepping in there and telling the you can't do this. He broke Singapore law. The rest of the world doesn't agree with our death sentence, but that doesn't mean we're doing away with capital punishment because the rest of the world... Well, our Einhorn wasn't released by the French until we t- guaranteed them that the uh, death penalty wouldn't be used. Yeah, and see, this is the issue, though, is that, like, you know, we... we uh, and I know that we talked about this versus other topics, but or that you guys have at least, you know, but the problem here is that you can't expect other people outside of America to follow American law. And if you're going to ask something of them, you need to be mindful of their laws. And, you know, I mean, I have a problem with Hollywood as far as this is concerned, because Roman Polanski, I mean, yes, he makes fantastic films, but the the man is, you know, venerated in Hollywood as if though this was some sort of innocent mistake. You know, we for, we've we already forgiven Chris Brown for beating up Rihanna, but we just can't let poor Kanye go for stepping on stage and taking the microphone away from Taylor Swift. And I don't love Kanye. I just think this is... I don't forgive him because I do love Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no excuse for what either one of them did. Well, absolutely. But the problem is in Hollywood, you know, that people are very choosy about what they give forgiveness for. And as consumers, we choose when we when we buy an album or when we buy a ticket to a movie, you know, and and I, I feel like because these people are quote unquote geniuses or whatever, because a lot of people like their music or a lot of people like their movies, we let them get away with maybe not murder. But yes, yes. Yeah, maybe even in some cases they do get away with murder. Oh, we're not going there. Not, yeah. Don't go there. <laughs> That's a conversation <laughs> for a whole other show. <laughs> so what, what else, uh, anything else on this, or are we moving on to something else? Well, Holly had earlier mentioned something about children not going to the trial. Oh, yeah. Uh, Michael Jackson's children are actually boycotting the trial uh, for his doctor because they are basically, you know, Apparently, they they don't want to be a part of reliving the death of their father. And, you know, coming to the trial, participating in the trial would basically involve them having to relive all the pain that they went through when their father died. And they don't want to do that. It's a media circus anyway. Yeah. Oh, it's going to absolutely Absolutely. be. I mean, they've shown the man, they've shown the man no respect in death. And the family, and, 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 you know, and and these kids are, are, they're being paraded around like, the precious personal toys. So we touched on this a little bit on last week's uh, show, Fred. What's the latest on the trial? I happen to have seen, read the transcript this week from the paramedic. He was testifying about what he saw, and he asked, uh, the, the doctor identified himself as being the doctor on the scene, and the paramedic wanted to be brought up to date and asked him, you know, what led to this, what medications was he on or so on and so forth and the doctor and everybody in the room at the time just like froze and went into shock and stumbled and they were like humana 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 <laughs> and they they couldn't give the paramedic even any answers um 
so I don't know, you know, maybe, maybe even now in this trial for the doctor, maybe it was all legitimate, and under the circumstances of Michael Jackson ODing or whatever the heck happened to him, everybody was just like in a state of shock um, because this was Michael Jackson, Holly. Well, I mean, I'm sure that they were in a state of shock. You think about Michael Jackson being your client, and there he is lying dead. You know this is a problem much bigger than you, much bigger than you could ever. And people are going to be looking for blame because whatever people think about Michael Jackson, we take ownership of him as a musician. We take ownership of his musician, of his music, of his talent. You know, people at large across the world, you know, people were in shock at hearing the news that Michael Jackson died. They said they can't be possible. That can't actually be happening, not Michael Jackson. And so this guy knew he was going to be, you know, under the gun from the moment this happened. You know, of course they're stressed out, but I think uh, whether or not his actions uh, led to this sort of also begs to the question of, you know, you you think about, we, we dealt with this someone I was personal training, you think about that you go to a doctor and you say, my knee hurts. And the doctor may say to you, if they're a great doctor, they'll say, well, you know, you have some inconsistencies throughout your body, your hips are twisting, your ankles are loose, or, you know, perhaps something like, you know, you need to strengthen certain muscles, but you don't want to hear that from your doctor. What you want is, how are we going to fix this? Are we going to do surgery? Are you going to give me some drugs? And Michael Jackson had a, how many stop tour ahead of him? About 50, it was going to be 50 stops. Yeah, 50 stop tour ahead of him. And so he's saying, just get me through my tour. Just get me through this next show. Just get me through this next rehearsal. And it's been a whole life of just get me through. I mean, eventually that kind of treatment is going to snowball. But there has to be some responsibility placed on the fact that as people, this is what we ask of our doctor. And and even when a, a semi-comparative uh, example is uh, Amy Winehouse... Um, just this past week or so, it, it came out where apparently with her cause of death and everything, it's being explained a little bit further. Uh, where was it? I was just looking at it here. Do, 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 try to give us some good facts that she was actually died of like alcohol withdrawal because she wasn't drinking or even on drugs anymore, because apparently they didn't find anything in her system in the autopsy. And now the doctors or the medical community is saying that, no, there's this thing called, um, you know, alcohol withdrawal, and whether it led to cardiac arrest or something, that that's what killed her then. So she was maybe cleaning herself up, and it ultimately killed her anyway. Well, part of what they're not talking about, Michael Jackson, and it, it, it are basically toxicology reports as, as, at large. I mean, it's entirely possible that before the doctor came in there, he he dosed himself. The doctor doses him, which overdoses him and kills him at that point. But, you know, I find it hard to believe that the doc. I mean, I'm glad not charging the guy with murder because I find it hard to believe that this guy would want Michael Jackson dead. Here's your meal ticket. He's hoping this kid's going to live for the next Yeah, I don't see how years. it could be a first degree or premeditated murder. That's what they murder, originally tried. Know. Yeah, no, but he's on trial for, trial for manslaughter, and I think if you want to have someone on trial, I mean, I don't know how many, I'm getting this from Law and Order, I'll be honest with you. I don't know, you know, how many... How hey, many if it's people. on Law and Order, it's got to be correct. Absolutely. I mean, but, you know, <laughs> if you want to get a manslaughter charge, you got to go in with murder, because there's going to be some negotiation. So we, again, we're reiterating some of what was discussed last week, but, you know, this is an ongoing trial, so it doesn't hurt to discuss it again. Um we said last week, was this guy just thrown under the bus then? See the scapegoat? Well, I mean, the way I look at it, and I'm not saying he was or what, I'm not saying he's not culpable for, uh, partially culpable for Michael Jackson's death, but the family wants answers, and they're entitled answers. And like I've said, and Ed, you've known this for years, I have no respect for Joe Jackson at all. I think he's a money grub piece of, and I'm not going to get into that because we have a lady on the show, but the point is that, you know, Joe Jackson's been living off his son for a lot of years, and he want, and, and, and the meal ticket's gone, and they want answers, and the world wants answers, and looking for somebody to blame, and, you, and nobody wants to blame Michael. I mean, nobody also wants to blame any of his handlers who should have said, Mike, this stuff's going to kill you. You got to stop. You have to get treatment. You have to do something because drug. This what you know. You don't just give this kid you know uh, the anesthetic. It starts out with sleeping. Starts out with heavier sleeping pills, and your body starts to build up an uh, 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 an immunity to this. And so this is 
that occurred overnight. This is over years and right. years and years and years of abuse. And like Holly said, just get me through one more. Get me through one more. Well, the, the, the get me through one more never stop. But every day it's get me through one more. Okay. Well, with it being an ongoing trial, I'm sure we'll be discussing it again in the upcoming weeks. What do you guys have next? I was reading, uh, and I don't, again, I'm trying to get the facts out for next week's show about they uh, want to try and uh, curb, and basically they want to. Um, Cancel, well, not cancel, but suspend voting rights in this country. And that creates a problem with states' rights, national elections. And it's being done, and it's it's something that's being done, apparently, by the Democratic Party. And it happens to be what it is. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Suspend voting rights. They want to tell me that I that you can't, can't vote, vote anymore? That you can't vote anymore. Suspend voting rights. And it's something I, I, I don't think will ever fly, but, I mean, and even if the fact that they're to it bothers me. I, I mean, I, I'm wondering to what extent they're looking to suspend voting rights. You know, like, where where is this coming from? I don't know. I don't know. It's just something I read and I read in past. And I want to do some more research on it because it's, it's, it's a very interesting concept. But, I mean, what's the purpose behind it? Is it, is it to keep the president administration in office or is it to try and tell the people people don't know what you're doing? I obviously want to look into this further. We need to uh, see where this came from and where it's headed. And like well, it's been discussed. Oh, go ahead. ahead. No, they, well, they were talking about, you know, there's a GOP website that has uh, something up about this right now. Uh, it basically came from the fact that a lot of people feel that Congress isn't doing their job right now. They're at a total standstill. No one's passing any legislation. They're they're playing a giant game of uh, chicken. Uh, essentially, we actually discuss it. Uh, I'm at Washington University getting my degree in business, and we discuss it as being just a giant game theory. I mean, and and there's a there's a place for that in politics. Don't get me wrong, but when it comes down to the country just completely collapsing in on itself and passing legislation, you pass legislation. You know, somebody's got to agree on something. And basically, the the lady who suggested this uh, was a Democrat. Her name's Purdue. And she was joking. And she said, maybe we should not have any votes. Maybe we should not vote for any more people until uh, until the the legisl until some legislation gets passed, until the people who are in office actually do their jobs, because basically we're encouraging this kind of behavior by voting for people who do this sort of thing. How about we just fire everybody who's there? Start fresh. Right, exactly. And that's what I think is the right answer. I mean, I think I think that when you're at your job, if I were, let's say, a marketing director for, you know, a major company like Nike, and I refused to make decisions. Oh, you had, to, you had to bring this full circle to sneakers, didn't you, Allie? Oh, I do love Go ahead. Stuff. Go Give a plug for your website. Go ahead. Hurry <laughs> Go, ahead. Plug. Go ahead. My website is uh, www.wearitbright.com. Uh, I typically review um, sneakers, but I also do uh, some reports on just basic activities, you know, getting out there, getting active. I'm all for getting active and wearing fantastic looking clothing while you're doing it. Okay. <laughs> that was your chance. That's what's known in the business. Not back to your, not back to your a store. That's plug, though. Seamless <laughs> plugs made it the best. Now we don't remember where we were, do we? That doesn't matter. Okay. So, 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 well, essentially, I think the point is, is that the lady was saying it as a joke, but obviously the GOP is making a big to do about it because she, this lady's a Democrat, and the Republicans are saying, oh, she's trying to stop voting, and she doesn't want to suspend voting, but she's just saying, like, listen, if we can't do our jobs, why are we electing new? You know, like if we need. We, Basically, the government needs to start doing their job, which is true. And speaking of the GOP, the latest up-to-date up news on Chris Christie, the governor of New Jersey, is if you follow politics or this election, presidential election cycle at all, uh, you'll know that there seems to be a huge effort in the Republican Party to get Christie to run for president. And he has said all along that he is not going to run for president. And I hope he doesn't. Just, oh, this, morning, do. just this morning, it looks as though he's starting to reconsider. Um, but in his reconsidering statement, he's, he made this great comment. And I, I just from your little background noises there, I could tell you're probably not fans of Governor Christie, um, of which I'm not either. There are some things I like about him and some things I don't like about him, which goes to say about almost any politician. But he had this great comment about it. He says, you know, the pool always looks nicer when you're standing outside of it looking in. 
Well, that's true. Boy, is that a great comment. So, you know, you can see that this guy probably doesn't really want to run. He does enjoy looking at the pool from the outside, but, but you know, the he problem might be I have into running. I have problem. The only problem I have with him, and I mean, it's like you've always said, he's a moderate, a moderate conservative, which I really don't find. But I don't have. He recently did uh, disbanded the gaming commission in the state of New Jersey, which has got to be the stupidest move that any governor would make. The, the gaming commission are the ones who keep the ga- the casinos. Uh, okay, so who regulates the casinos? Right. So now what happened? What he did by doing that? My sister-in-law works for one of the casinos, and the casino she works for fired almost a third of its staff the next day and laid them off because they had nobody regulating what they do. And he, here's a guy looking for people to vote for him for re-election, and he just can't. Over, over 2,000 people in Atlantic City lost their jobs because with the stroke of a pen, he did away with the gaming commission. I live in Pennsylvania, a mile from Mount Airy, and these we tightened up our gaming commission because we want to make sure the tables were honest. And, well, and, and, you know, I mean, you don't create unemployment, especially in, in, in an economy we're in now. Well, more importantly, also, I mean, the GOP does not need another candidate. Bank on the ones you've got running, man. I mean, it's too late in the game to try to alter. And they're, they're still, yeah, along those lines, Holly, they're probably still going to pick up a couple more. I'm still not convinced that Sarah Palin isn't going to jump in. So oh. there could still be more in addition to what we currently have. Yeah, I mean, they're they're a vortex right now. They're just sucking in every GOP politician in the entire universe, and somebody's got to run the other sectors. You can't just have everybody running for president every five minutes. I mean, I'm not a fan of anybody who's currently in the race, save maybe Ron Paul, but let's be fair, nobody's going to vote for Ron Paul. He's way too honest. He's way too... He, he, he's not what they're looking for. And it's there's there's a problem here. I mean, they, they just... I don't know what they're looking for, but I don't think they're going to find it in Chris Christie. Okay. No, I don't so, think so. What do we have, Belt? Well, I actually uh, would like to turn the tables to romance since I am the feminine force today. (laughs) Uh, Here we go. Look at this, Fred. The first time on As We See It, we have a female, and already now we're going to talk romance. Well, you should have known that. Yeah, I mean, you should have seen this coming. No, I, I actually, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to lament romance a little bit. I'm going to, we're going to call this an anti-romance rant, actually. I think it's fantastic that the Obamas have been together uh, for 19 years. I don't, however, think it should be the top news story on NPR and the Huffington Post. I mean, I think uh, Michelle Obama looks great in her black dress. I think it's fantastic that they went to dinner in Alexandria, Virginia. I don't think I need to know that, though. It's not my business. I don't want (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and I, I don't need to know that she went shopping at Target. Not yeah, Target. Target. Or Target. <laughs> I mean, the, the fact is that she went shopping at Target in the middle of the night, you know, with secrets, with, with 1,500 Secret Service people. Right, and around. nobody in the store anyway. And the thing that kills me is that, that, that when you look at this, yeah, okay, fine. I mean, how much did this cost me, Mr. Taxpayer, for her to go shopping at Target or for her? For her and I don't have a problem with the Obamas going out for dinner. I mean, I, I, they can't stay every night in the, in the White House, but what did this cost the taxpayers? Oh, I don't think that matters at all. And I'm sure it was negligible, if anything. It probably came out of his menial salary that we're paying him because we don't pay our presidents as well as well as we should for what they some are. Some of these um, pre-mentioned governors' little uh, excursions on helicopters oh, yeah. to pick up their sons at softball games, uh, that costs a lot more than Michelle going to a Target. Indeed, oh, yeah, yeah. indeed. And to continue, if if you guys don't mind, along my anti- go ahead. Let's talk, oh, go, 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 talk go. romance. Go ahead. Well, uh, let's let's bring it full circle here. You know, let's go from one extreme to the other, from people who really value their marriage to Gene Simmons and his former playmate uh, girlfriend got married after uh, 28 years. Yeah, it's about time. What do you think was the impulse behind that? <laughs> 28, 28 years, two kids, and if you don't marry me, I'm gonna sue you for every dime you got. Uh, I don't know what the what the impulse was, but you know, in, in this day and age, and that's rampant in Hollywood. I mean, here you have people getting pregnant. You, you, you're reading all the trade magazines. You know, so and so is pregnant. So and so is pregnant. It's baby time. So and so is pregnant. And probably, pregnant. then probably for the then probably for the benefits of being married. Like if one of the uh, people dies or insurance oh, yeah. reasons or whatever. I mean, the insur- uh, insurance insurance loan uh, benefit. I mean, the, the problem is that, you know, it's, you can't, I mean, people say 
I mean, I, I enjoy being married. So. Well, Ooh, okay. I heard I heard an awful lot of silence there. Well, what about <laughs> that brings the gay and lesbian thing into play then? Um, it, that's like a reason that they want to be afforded marriage is so that they could uh, take advantage of the same uh, benefits that male and female marriages have, where if one spouse dies, they could collect the insurance money, so on and so forth. And they should absolutely have that, but I don't think that they should call it marriage, because marriage is defined as a union between a man and a woman, and if you want to call it civil union, and I have, I'll, I'll be the first from the back behind a couple, you know, who are a, a same-sex couple who've been together for years, having the same rights and benefits that I have as far as property. The problem I have is that when you look at what's going on, especially in Hollywood, Rosie O'Donnell got married a couple of years ago to her then, I guess, wife you'd want to call her, and now she's with somebody else. Now, wait a second. When did they get their divorce? Oh, come on now. You can't, you can't lay that on the gay community. Yeah, I, that I'm happens not, enough. I'm not, that, the, I'm not laying that in the gay community. What I'm saying is that they're not recognizing the same law that they want. That married uh-huh. they should have got a divorce. You're either, it's either I'm, legal or it's not. I'm going to go ahead and lay the Elizabeth Taylor card down on this one because I feel you guys will really appreciate <laughs> and understand that. Um, but, you know, I think that the reason that marriage should be afforded to all people has to be has to be visit. I mean, you can you know, I know you guys are for it. You just want to call it something else. But whatever you call it, the, you know, as Fred was saying, when you talk about getting married, they have two kids, right? They have a 19 year old and a 22 year old his girlfriend right so if one of them were to die now these kids are at the point where they're old enough they can take care of themselves but let's talk about a gay couple who adopts a child together which i think should be legal i think should be perfectly oh, fine if you're married you want your spouse to be the first person in line to get that child and they don't get those rights under any other arrangement they don't what get about, the rights to no the they don't so i think we're all in agreement that they should what about hospital visits i mean oh for sure if, if my wife goes in the hospital i have the absolute right or you have the absolute right to go visit your husband in the hospital god forbid it should happen if a, a sex couple may not depending upon the hospital may not have that right because it's family only well wait a second you know we've been together for 25 years you're not family at that point that's right. You know what? Maybe I didn't think about this before, but perhaps maybe Gene Simmons is looking. I mean, he's he's 62. Maybe he's starting to think, you know, he's he's seeing the light at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> he may be starting to think about who's going to be in there pulling the plug or making that decision to put the tube in his throat. <laughs> well, I don't think you want Chase Fraley doing it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, you know, hey, he's well, up here with the wedding tube, ceremony. Dude. I don't think we want him making the decision. Okay, let's move along. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got something? <laughs> uh, Holly, you were mentioning about the about this new thing, the Kindle? Oh, yeah, man. Amazon Kindle Fire. This is this is it for me. I came on the show today just because I want to talk about the Amazon Kindle Fire. I'm getting one. I didn't pre-order it, but I'm uh, getting one uh, uh, mid-November when they come out. Hey, I have enough problems trying to program my phone. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm telling you, man. I mean, I don't know about you, Fred, but uh, and I think you got to get on top of this because they, you know, they could. They there's a possibility they're saying they might sell out. Wall Street Journal is saying that this item alone is going to crash Amazon. That Amazon should never have gone up against Apple. That everybody's thinking of this is a huge blow to Apple. I'm thinking. I might not have gotten a tablet, but I'm definitely going to get the Amazon Fire. Yes, I think they can coexist. This is not a tablet in the same respects as the iPad, but yet in some respects it's better than the iPad. It also is not an e-reader like the Kindle. Uh, It it is a tablet. Um, What I heard yesterday, I guess, is that in these pre-orders, they're anticipating about 5 million pre-orders that they're probably not even going to be available in mid-November then, uh, which is fine with me. I'll get one as soon as I get the opportunity to. They're going to be sold in enough places, um, you know, your best buys and so on and so forth. I'll find one somewhere. But this this is great. I mean, even if it's not an iPad killer, even if it's not an iPad, iPad's the lowest model, the 3G only, which, of course, this fire will be, uh, I mean, the uh, Wi-Fi only, which, of course, this Fire is going to be Wi-Fi only initially in this first generation. But the Wi-Fi only iPad with the lowest uh, memory 
is four hundred ninety nine dollars, and we're talking one ninety nine for the Fire. And I just paid five dollars for a Motorola Zoom for my son, so which he wanted, and you know, I mean, so which is comparable to the iPad, but it but it does flash videos, and and that's a problem with. Don't get me started on this, but there's an apples and oranges thing. Um, you know, you you can't, or, or I, I don't anymore like to say you can't because, first of all, you always could. Anything could be hacked and rooted. So there always were ways around it, but Apple never officially recognized Flash videos. So that was always my problem with the iPad. Um, as a matter of fact, our producer correspondent Jessica Moskowitz in San Francisco, she was going to get an iPad several months ago and I had to tell her that you realize, Jess, that you can't watch your own base net videos on the iPad. And she said, of course, why not? And I said, because it doesn't do flash. And that was the end of her getting an iPad. Well, and you know, the thing about it is, is it's not just Flash, it's Adobe, it's a lot of other things. And, you know, I, I love what you said that it's apples and oranges, by the way, because I do think that there's a price differentiation, there's an ability differentiation that sort of depends on what you're going to be using your tablet for. But on the flip side, I also think that, you know, Apple, in some ways, they they love to hate Steve Jobs. And I also, I, lo I love the man, I hate him, I love him, I hate him, I love him, I go so back and forth with him. But I, I feel like they were sort of just waiting on him to kind of go away, and they'll wait a few more years, and then they'll stop fighting everybody. I, just... I love Bill Gates, and <laughs> Microsoft didn't fall apart when Bill Gates more or less walked away. Well, and, and, you know, I think it's interesting because I think Apple may just be sort of waiting on him to kind of step out in order to be able to talk to Adobe and in order to be able to, if well, you that's, will. Yeah, that's already in the works, and that's why it's happening. Um, yeah. I, I think even in all of the early things that you're reading about the iPhone 5, that could be coming out actually as early as next week at this point. Uh, I've been hearing by October 15th. But regardless, whenever the iPhone 5 comes out, there's been talk that Flash will be enabled on that. Well, and you know, um, the the big debate really, I think, is we now that we've pretty much established the differentiation between the two is for sure cost. You know, as they're saying that the Kindle Fire is being sold for one ninety nine, it costs them two ten to make. Uh, but right. the thing about the Kindle Fire is, is it comes with an Amazon Prime account, which I know Ed, you're paying for Amazon Prime account currently. Yep, seventy five dollars a year or so, and that That's includes right. free shipping for anything you physically have shipped from Amazon, including yeah, their movie that. service. Exactly. Now, exactly. Now, think that they put that in my hand with this device. How much more stuff am I going to buy on Amazon? And that's, that's what made Amazon as big as it is. Is that they're ahead? That they're ahead, that they're ahead of the curve. No, they're they're such a great service. I'm well, they're trying I'm to be a big ahead fan. I I have before I even get my fire, I utilize Amazon MP3 in the cloud. All of my music is up on Amazon servers. I can listen to my music collection or my podcast collection on any computer I'm in front of just by logging into my account. On any phone I'm on just by logging into my account and and then like i said their music their movie service and i ju i just picked up a new uh, android phone and i wanted to get a secondary battery because android phones are known to go through batteries and with my amazon prime account which you get automatic two-day shipping at, at no additional cost because that's included in your prime account it cost me eleven dollars where are you going to get a you know, a, a cell phone battery for eleven dollars delivered to your door in two days. You're not. Well, and I think I think the really cool thing. I mean, I I think the Kindle Fire is awesome. But listen, I mean, you know, I've I've got iTunes, I've got an iPod, and I'm not looking for it to replace those. But I do audio books, I do Netflix, I do a ton of other things. And I and the fact is, I'm going to be able to watch those videos on here. And the truth is, as I love Netflix, man. Even with the Quickster split, even everything, I think they've gotten the raw end of the deal from some studios who don't want to move forward. But I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this on Amazon because Amazon's video service is a no-brainer. It's really easy to use. And if this if this particular device shows me videos and shows me everything, and I can do my audiobooks from Audible, which is connected to Amazon on it, I, I mean everything I want's in one place. Well, I hope Amazon gives us some money for this commercial. Right? I didn't realize. Yeah, that. that's for sure. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. I know one of us has got to get an iPad so that we can tell the difference between the two, and we're not so one-sided. Not happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
not happen. Well, do we have anything else, or uh, Holly, do you want to um, tell us what's going on in St. Louis if we don't have anything else to cover on this show? Well, I, I'm out of other things, but I can tell you here in St. Louis, man, I, I went to a really cool event today with the APA, uh, the Animal Protection Agency. Uh, Purina One was there with their show dogs, you know, that just doing amazing things. And, you know, it was a neat event. Uh, I have an adopted pit bull, and so we had a blast getting him treats. He's actually asleep on the couch behind me right now because he's exhausted. <laughs> And, uh, and, you know, I mean, here in St. Louis, there are just a number of events like this every single weekend to cover. And I just can't wait to be bringing them to people on About St. Louis. I'm really excited about that. It's going to be any really cool. idea Any idea when we can start seeing that? Well, hopefully soon. I'm basically just waiting now for a camera. <laughs> yep, yep, we're working on that. We're I, working on it. Yeah, so I guess that's as soon as we get Holly set up with her camera and her equipment, then we'll be good to go. But no, so that's that's great. Hopefully, uh, you know, over the next month or so, we will see the premiere of About St. Louis. That'll be cool. And then coming up again, since we're uh, plugging BaseNet programming now, we are only two months or so away from our fourth anniversary of BaseNet. And that's also the fourth anniversary holiday special. Mm -hmm. So uh, our holiday special is every year our biggest viewed show. We get more views annually on our holiday show than we do anything else. So it's just super big for us. Holly will be hosting it again this year. She'll host it from St. Louis. And then all of our other correspondents will be picking it up uh, in the different cities. I was just able to verify this week and to make the arrangements where we are going to cover the Christmas tree in New York City in Rockefeller Center. All this right. For the first yes, time. Are. You sitting down, Holly? I am. Fred and the Lobster are going to host our New York City coverage. <laughs> we're we're going to try. So, so we're going to have Fred and the Lobster covering uh, the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. Not necessarily the tree lighting, but, you know, at some point once the tree is lit, they'll go down and they'll be able to uh, talk to some the people Rockefeller there Center and hangout. show us the tree. So in addition to Boston and Los Angeles and St. Louis this year and San Francisco, we're finally going to include New York City as well for our About New York City coverage. So our holiday special will be... Should be the best ever this year. That's about it, I guess, for show number 11 of As We See It. Hopefully, Holly, you could join us again in the future. Uh, maybe make this almost a regular thing. I, I think that show really went into a new and different direction by having you on board. And it, As We See It always was a news-type show. And since you are the national news coordinator, what better fit than having you on board? So thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Ed. I look forward to it. And uh, go ahead. I do. I, I, you know, again, like Ed said, I mean, I, I, I like the fact that you're here, have you on as often as you want to come on because you do take the show into a different, a different venue than we, me and Ed, back and forth, but you do interject a different idea, and I like that. Okay. And then hopefully, uh, you know, we'll also get Jessica Moskowitz on at some point, hopefully, and mm. and Larry the Lobster, and we could even do a little Larry and uh, Holly and the Lobster reunion here by uh, getting the two of them on. And... Um, Keep the tissues close at hand. Yeah, for, for people that don't aren't really that familiar with the Lobster's work, when Holly and the Lobster are on as we see it, it's pretty much going to be a... Holly show. Um, <laughs> Larry is more visual, so I guess we, we almost should wait for Larry to, uh, for when we the do video. this as a video program as opposed to an audio podcast. Uh, Larry tends to have not much of an opinion on many subjects, so... But, it, but he's great. It'll be great to have a Holly and the Lobster reunion on as we say it. So that's what we have coming up in the future. So I think for now, for Sunday, October 2nd, show 11 of As We See It, that's how I see it, from the Boston studios of BaseNet Internet Television, I'm Ed Jupin. From the Pennsylvania offices of BaseNet Internet Television, I'm Ed Boaz. And from here in St. Louis, Missouri, I'm Holly Hurley-Feather. And we'll see you next time. Good night.